Hello Retro Challenge. I've made some progress with my Retro Challenge 2021-10 contribution. Um, I told you in my last video that in order to realize, uh, implement something like the drum computer that we just saw on the Microtronic with the existing instruction um, set that I have an issue, namely that the standard Microtronic does not support non-blocking input, right? And so what I just showed you is that I can actually change the register values for the different drums on the fly while the Microtronic is playing back, right? And for this you need um, some opcode basically that scans the keypad and uh, when you push a button it stores that into register memory, right? And I cannot store into SRAM because there is no writable, or actually RAM, right? So there's no writable program memory or writable um, um, the only writable memory is really register memory, so the kin input command is the only means that I have to input something from the keypad and change program behavior based on that. So it's really a Harvard architecture and not a, a von Neumann architecture. And um, for that, in order to realize now um, something like the pattern-based drum computer I just showed you, I have again change the um, semantics of some of these vacuous opcodes, right? And um, I told you about these vacuous opcodes uh, a couple of times already and I wanted to um, give a little deeper perspective and explanation of what that is, right? Um, so basically a vacuous opcode or is an opcode that don't, doesn't have a meaningful semantics and I don't think I made that very clear in my previous videos but um, it is related to opcodes that have the one of their operands specified immediately uh, as part of the opcode itself, right? So, for example, we have an opcode which is called um, Eddy, and the I basically um, stands for immediate, right? So it is immediate addressing of the of one of the operands. So the first operand is the register, so it gets its first. Um, um, operand from a register that you specify, but then the second operand for the add operation is specified immediately as part of the opcode, and that is a constant, right? And so um, when the programmer uses these opcodes, she or he of course knows what the immediate operand is, right? So if you say something like you have an opcode saying add zero to register X, then no programmer will ever write this, right? Because it doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't change the register value. And uh, one might call these um, um, opcodes item potent um, opcodes, right? Because they don't change the status of any of the registers. So, And they are specified directly in the code, so the programmer knows uh, when one of those item potent arguments is being used for the operation. And um, hence um, wouldn't do it, right? So that's of course different if you use registers, right? If you have add, there's also an add operation, right, without the immediate operand. And um, that basically specifies two registers, right? Add the first register to the second register, and both are specified uh, indirectly, right, but not immediate. And then of course it can happen that there is a zero in the register, so that's totally fine, right? But for the um, opcodes where you really specify the operand immediately, immediate as part of the opcode, right? Uh, the item potent opcodes can be used now for um, extra side effects, and I've been using this uh, a number of times for outputting the MIDI data to the um, serial port, right? And for enabling the MIDI mode and things like that. And now I also use one of these opcodes um, for enabling um, a mode, basically a non-blocking keyboard input mode, right? So it's the same opcodes uh, that are being used for keyboard input, but if the non-blocking mode is enabled, then the program uh, just um, performs input as demonstrated in this video. Program runs, and if there is a um, keypad um, key press available, and the command, the kin keyboard input command is encountered, then it's being stored into the um, designated register and the program continues. Else, if there isn't uh, a keyboard keypad input available, the program just continues without altering the designated uh, destination register. So um, 
that's what was needed in order to realize this pattern-based drum computer. And um, yeah, so Asa, um, how many of those um, vacuous opcodes do we have available, right? So basically all operations, all instructions that um, have an eye for immediate and um, operations that uh, have item potent um, basically arguments, right, uh, can be used for this. So there is at i, the zero is the item potent um, um, value, right, so I have 16 opcodes there, this is uh, 501 to 50 f basically right and then i also have sub i again that's for subtraction and the zero is the item potent argument there so i have um, opcodes and other 16 opcodes is 700 to 70f right um, and then i also found another one which is and i right so this is the end uh, logical end and again, I can use the F basically as the item potent uh, argument. And I have another 16 opcodes there. So altogether I have um, yeah, quite a number of opcodes and many of those are already used. And um, for example, 0 to 2 is, um, is uh, this is not an item potent. Well, in a sense it is, right? Because it means move register 2 onto itself, right? Which doesn't do anything. That's um, not a mathematically uh, item potent operation like um, add zero or uh, subtract zero or and with 16f for four bit register values, right? Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you that, but and, uh, and I, and I, and <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, with f is of course only item potent because we have four bit registers, right? So ending any register content with 16 with f right um, doesn't make a difference so um, in order to, so i'm turning on the midi mode here and then i'm using 3f1 and this is basically and f with register one right and um, as i just explained this is an item potent and in register one this is now being used to enable non-blocking input and i show you what i mean again i mean you already saw the drum computer but i'm ordering the program a little bit now i'm displaying one register um, starting from register zero and now i'm using um, kin command keyboard input into register zero and i loop right and um, so this program is now constantly uh, blinking the r and p for running and uh, program uh, input and question mark for um, or um, keyboard input um, expected, right? And we can see that actually a little bit better if I do something in that loop as well. So let me display two registers. And while I'm inputting into register zero with non-blocking input, right? I'm also counting in register one, and that's also on the display, and we see that. And then we, we run that program. And now you see the counter is running and um, the register zero with a zero now is displaying my keyboard input, right? And this is exactly what was needed, of course, for the real time uh, drum computer. So I can, the program is running, the counter is running, and I can um, <coughs> input values into registers without halting or blocking the program. And um, in comparison, Without this enable non-blocking uh, input command, right, the standard Microtronic semantics would be a blocking input, and I can uh, toggle that back by using the 3F0 uh, instruction, right, opcode. And now I have the standard blocking input from the Microtronic, and now you see what I mean, right? The counter is not running, it is blocking and waiting for my input. And the program only proceeds after I push the button here, right? And um, that, of course, um, is not useful for a pattern-based drum computer because then the program blocks and you don't hear the pattern and you can't change it on the fly, right? So non-blocking input again. Yeah, so that's going well, right? Um, let's um, <clears throat> maybe have another quick look at the program. So that explained now... Um, non-blocking input and 
that this was desirable um, for this program. Let me load back the drum computer program from EEPROM slot 10 and run it. Well, and I'm by no means uh, a good um, drum computer programmer, so but you see that it works and that I can Yeah, maybe we step through that program um, a little bit also. So 022, enable MIDI mode, enable non-blocking input, right? <clears throat> now display um, six um, digits on the display starting from register 2. And um, I'm using um, register 2 basically for the... Um, so it's four... Um, uh, how do you say? Four bars, right? Um, 16... Uh, beats right four times four and in the first register you see it when it's running here I have the um, the bar number from one to four right and then I have the beat number in the second register the um, counter that counts faster right so I'm um, I'm incrementing the um, the bar number here and then I'm <coughs> saying I'm putting a one into the beat number um, and now the second issue was, where do I store now um, all these uh, drums, right? Um, as I explained, I have 16 plus 16 uh, registers for bit. So I need some registers in order to drive the pro program logic, right? Like counting beat and, and, um, and bar numbers, as uh, just shown. And um, so I also need some registers, obviously, to store the MIDI drum note numbers. And um, so Microtronic has a great um, instruction set, which is um, the an, an opcode that ex exchanges basically the upper half of the registers, right, from here to there, from A to F registers, with the extra set of registers, right. So I can swap the upper upper eight registers back and forth uh, with the extra register set, right, as I said. I have 16 normal registers and 16 extra registers, all together adding up to 32 registers, basically similar to the Z80. And then I have commands which allow you, this is already the standard Microtronic instructions, um, opcodes, um, that allow you to toggle between the normal and the extra registers, so they are just swapped and copied over, right? And there are also some, there's one instruction which allows you to only swap the upper bank of eight registers and the lower bank of eight registers. And in order to not interfere with the program logic, um, I have arranged that um, now that the 16 drums that I'm inputting for the pattern are stored in the upper eight registers, right? So what I'm doing is, is um, I'm inputting uh, the, I'm using as a scratch pad these four registers for the current bar, basically, uh, drum notes. And they are being copied over from the registers, from the upper eight registers, right? So 084 means copy this register here. I'm pointing with my finger number the eight, the register eight to register four. And um, now I'm inputting into register four, right? I'm copying back what I just inputted, right, over the kin command into the register. And that might be the same value if I uh, haven't pushed a button, right, because this is now non-blocking keyboard input. And um, 044 then outputs that um, to the MIDI. And I have dedicated opcodes for outputting these four registers to MIDI, right. And um, yeah, then I'm calling a subroutine to do some delay for better timing uh, control. And now um, I'm <clears throat> I have an, a, a, a no operation here. Um, that is because usually if you after four beats you would change uh, the bar number, right? The bar count and uh, we are still in the same uh, bar, right? One, two, three, four. So the next four commands um, next four MIDI node inputs go into the same uh, bar 
and um, so one two three now uh, puts two into the beat number display so this is the second beat of the first bar and i'm now copying the value from register nine into register six and um, i'm using sorry register five and i'm using non-blocking input into register five and if any button should have been pressed right or not i mean not hasn't been pressed and it's the same value in that register then i'm copying the value back into nine right so these four are really my scratch pad re registers and the upper eight are my pattern registers and then i'm outputting um, the midi node that is in register five and i'm doing this with register six register seven and so on for all these eight registers right and so that gives me the first two bars of the four bar bar um, um, drum pattern and at some point then um, after all eight registers have been processed i need to now um, bring the other eight um, register from the background from the extra register set into the um, uh, current register set and for this there's an ingenious uh, <coughs> opcode uh, right um, as already mentioned that allows you to swap the upper half um, of the registers with the extra registers in the background back and forth and we see that opcode here this is called f f o e right f o e is um, the e x r m is a mnemonics I, I think that means exchange registers um i don't know m middle or medium i don't know but it means basically the upper eight registers are being swapped back and forth with this command so <clears throat> and um yeah then basically i then the program loops right so now we have the the extra registers as our our current registers and after after those eight have been processed in the same manner I just showed you with the um, instructions, right, with the program, then it's being swapped again, right? And um, so that way I can basically mm, store and process 19 um, clocks, uh, four bars, four by four. All right, guys, that was a little bit of a longer update, um, but I felt, you know, it's necessary to explain to some degree what I'm doing here. And um, some of the original Microtronic opcodes are really quite ingenious. For example, the exchange um, upper register half, right, FOE, with the background registers, allows you to leave the logic um, program controlling logic registers um, untouched and only use the upper half of the register file as um, as work uh, memory registers and swap them back and forth as needed so that's really quite insightful that a programmer would need that in order to write complex programs because otherwise you don't really have any other writable memory in this uh, architecture right in this harvard architecture so the registers are all that you have and you need um, um, quite a few of those right so all right guys thanks a lot for watching bye